Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Community Voices. I hope everybody is doing well, feeling great, enjoying the new season. Um, today, very excited for this episode. As you know, uh, we are, are right around the corner from Election Day, and this is a very um, interesting but important time uh, for just the world in general at this time, especially for the country. And I'm just very excited to have the opportunity to use our platform to be able to speak to the importance of election day and the election in general, but also just, you know, as somebody, as a black person myself, being able to speak to the empowerment of also getting us to vote and showing what that, what that looks like, why it's important and how just like that one vote has so much power in it and being able to speak to somebody who can express and even just showcase how important that is. Um, she's award-winning multimedia journalist, on-air talent, live event host, director of multi-platform content at Black Enterprise, and the founder of Hill Rise Media. Let me catch my breath. So many things. Selena Hill, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Devin. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I kind of want to uh, kick things off. You know, I have like a journalistic background myself, and so I really have a, a, a deep appreciation for what you do, uh, not just the space that you create as a Black woman being authentically yourself, but also just like your integrity and honesty in everything that you do and the uh, content that you create um, and just the way you approach things. So I, I'm wondering early on in your career, how did you kind of find that voice and like that sense of purpose in that space that you occupy today? Because it's changed a lot in the world and it's, it's 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 in a very interesting space as it is now. But I feel like sometimes that 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 finding your voice, finding that confidence in yourself and being able to stand on that in every position in every instance is very important. So how did you kind of find that voice and sense of purpose for yourself today? Yeah, you know, I think it took a lot of time. It was a work in progress. You know, when I started my career, well, Everything I do now professionally, I did in college, right? I went to a state school here in New York, SUNY O. Westbury, and I started a radio show. I was part of the newspaper. Um, I also was, I did, Um, I was the the PR, I forget what the title was, but I was in SGA doing like publicity. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really started to cultivate and hone those, those that skill set um, and, and talents and gets like real real life experience when it comes to media. And then when I started doing it professionally, um, that's when it was like the dot-com boom just seemed to take over and everything became digital. Like there, like there wasn't as much emphasis in linear news content and everything was digital. So when I was sort of navigating in that space, um, still applying the the skills that I learned from a traditional standpoint, but realizing that news had to be quicker um, and shorter and, and brief. And I think that in that, so I was going through that, but I was still I've, at the same time, like early in my career, I was still also writing for the Amsterdam News, which is the longest running black owned newspaper in the country. Uh -huh. So I was doing that and I was just doing all the things. And it was just like a learning process, right? Just like figuring it out. And I think that as I continue to just elevate in my career, that's where the confidence comes. I think, you know, most young people stepping out of college in a new landscape, in a new world, don't always feel as self-assured. Mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, with anything that you continue to practice, um, you, you become better at, and as a result, you become more confident. Um, I, I think I really developed my voice though, to answer your question, when I was doing my radio show and podcast professionally, mm -hmm. um, after college, we started doing it at a local radio station in Harlem, New York, and then we transitioned into podcasting and became a podcast first type of show. And when I was working on that um, with an incredible team um, of a civil rights lawyer, organizers and activists and political lobbyists, and we would have these in-depth discussions about race, culture and politics. And they really kept me sharp. Like 
I remember we would we would talk about things from a legal standpoint. We would talk about things from a political standpoint. And I would ask myself, okay, well, what am I an expert in? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a full-time activist. I'm not an organizer. But I became comfortable in my lived experience as a Black woman. And I was the only Black woman on that show. And well, I realized that my voice mattered. But it, it took a long, long time for me to feel like that and to own that and to realize that what I'm contributing to these conversations matters because it represented a whole sector of people. And again, those people were the ones that I feel looked like me and sounded like me. And, you know, I, I finally, I finally got to that point where I was like, you know what, I have something to say too. And I would let my voice be heard on the show. And what what is it? I love that because what is that? How can I explain this? Right. So that is such a it's such a joyous feeling to discover that in yourself and to discover your purpose and your voice and not just purpose in the voice, but then your like reasoning for moving there and like kind of growing that and remembering that constantly every episode, every day, every project, things like that. But I would love to kind of know too, like, could you kind of speak to the deeper, even almost like an extension of the purpose of really, what's the word I'm looking for? Empowerment. I think speaking to that, because I think it's one thing to be occupying that space for, for it's one thing to be occupying that space. Another thing to occupy that space as a black woman, but it's another thing to be able to just really take on always taking care of your people, making sure they're staying educated, making sure you're staying honest, staying truthful to like what's going on and trying to spearhead the conversation for the betterment of us. What is that part of your purpose feel like? I, I can only imagine that sometimes it can feel frustrating or sometimes it can feel like a lot to carry because it is, it is a lot to carry. But what does that feel like as well on top of that purpose? Um, My sense of purpose. So, and, and again, that show... The, the mission was to inform, educate, and empower disenfranchised communities of color. And I took that very seriously, whether one person was listening or hundreds of thousands of people were listening. I always showed up overprepared at my best, ready to have hard conversations, tough conversations, controversial con conversations, sometimes with folks who thought very differently than us, who were on the opposite side of the political spectrum. Um, or, you know, people that did not agree. And I felt like through that work, um, it, it, I was contributing to, you know, my piece to a larger pie. Mm. I wasn't trying to take on all the cares of the world. I wasn't trying to be, you know, the second coming of Christ. I was, I was just trying to do my part, what I could do, you know? So I didn't think of it as like, everything lies on me, but also working with an incredible team. So we mm. were all doing that. And I think that with the work that I do today, um, I still try to remain authentic. I still try to remain truthful. I still try to, you know, approach everything with integrity, with honesty, and from a journalistic standpoint. Um, whether that's even when I'm doing like live, moder when I'm moderating live discussions and doing in-depth research and, you know, coming up with, you know, questions that, would be you may be challenging for some folks or you know so I still I still do that and I still have that sense of purpose to inform and educate and empower my community because I feel like there aren't enough sources and that are dedicated to doing just that um I think we get a lot of entertainment in the culture which look mm -hmm. i i consume as well i'm here for it Guilty, same, <laughs> but I, same. right but i also think that when it comes to just mm, the work that really matters that affect our day-to-day -day lives uh that affect the laws in our state the laws in our nation that you know affect our schools and and again our communities i think that that work um we, we definitely need to make space for that as well mm, i love that i, I love that Ugh. And like I said, I just have such an appreciation for that. Just such an appreciation. Because I mean, I think in today's world where everybody has a podcast or like everybody's trying to entertain and not necessarily inform or 
a lot of the opinions aren't informed. There's a lot of there, there, there is, it's almost like the wild, wild west a little bit when it comes to media and accurate information and things like that. So I, I, like I, there's so much value in just even that little bit of research, that little bit of like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I want to ask somebody a question or I want to open up a, a, a conversation that may spark you to think about something or project an answer that nope, none of these other outlets have necessarily got from you. Like to me, that is a very strong and very um, unique skill to have and to be able to bring to the table. So I, I just, I love that that's the thought process. And on top of that, I love too that you're not, like you said, you're not trying to save the world. You're not trying to be like the next, the second coming. You're doing your part. And I, I love that you said that I think, especially during election time, it can feel like, we're not doing enough yes. or like what more can be done or even, even outside of election, even when, when it comes to empower like things in our community or po pushing like localized efforts and things like that, or trying to be louder about other issues. It's like, I I'm not doing enough. I could do more. And it's like, you don't have to do everything, but what are you doing to contribute? Because even that 1% or 0.01%, whichever it is, even that is pushing forward compared to doing nothing, saying nothing, being silent, just watching, just complaining. So I, I love that you were able to speak to that because it's just like so that's like the key. Like it's just so important. It's just so important. I, I agree. Like just doing something. Like if you're passionate, especially if you're passionate about this election and paying attention, your something could be research, right? Mm -hmm. Um just educating yourself about the candidates and going to reliable sources. In, a, in today's world where we are infiltrated with AI, um, with misinformation, dis disinformation, and just a, an oversaturated with content, it's hard mm -hmm. to really break through that white noise, right? And to figure out what's real and what's fake. And, and, and unfortunately in our society, folks aren't being taught the difference between propaganda and real. They're not mm -hmm. being taught on how to decipher and discern what is actually going to be some, what is something that is an actual news source and what is something that's made up in a lie, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of us are finding ourselves in a bubble where the only content that we're consuming is content that we already agree with or, or affirm our belief. So my challenge to folks is, Get outside your communities and have a real conversation. Get off of social. When you're in an Uber, when you're at McDonald's, when you're on a plane, have a conversation. I've been doing that. And everyone, my taxi drivers, my Uber drivers, people on the plane, we've been talking politics. And, and it's like for the first time, there are people who are hearing from folks who um, have or share my political views or values, right? Because they're stuck in their own vortex. And mm -hmm. when they finally hear, um, they hear a different perspective from someone in real, a real person in real time, I think it helps you to open up more. Because I feel like when we're on social media and we're just leaving comments, it's easier it's easiest for us to like let our pride or ego kick in or or be nasty or mean or want to retaliate. Like if someone is insulting you, you want to insult them back. But when you're in person and you're, you know, having that that, that conversation, you listen a bit more. Absolutely. I, I, I really I truly like it's just it's just such a different time with like the the there's no not having that guideline or having that like authenticity check of like what is real and what's fake and where if you think one thing you can go find something that agrees with that one thing and it'd be good but it may not be accurate like there's no un like you know so I, I love that you're able to speak to that um also with this being community voices we'll be continuing to do the work to make sure that we're giving back and uplifting uh voices and uplifting the communities um, so we're going to be actually donating 5K to Headcount. This is an organization that helps individuals register to vote at festivals um, and concerts around the country. I, I just want to reiterate here, elections are so pivotal. They're so important. Uh, and to even to be able to reach people in these moments where you wouldn't think, kind of actually speaking to what you just said, where the moments where you wouldn't necessarily want to have a political conversation or bring up politics it is so important. It is so important sometimes to have those conversations, whether they be hard 
um, really be difficult just to have conversations in various spaces because then in the day, everything is a trickle down. Everything is a trickle down, no matter what space what space you're in. So to be able to reach the young voters at festivals, to be able to reach um, future voters at concerts and things like that is just so impactful. So it, it is, is awesome that we're able to give to uh, such a cause during these special times that have such an impact every four years or in general, even for local elections. Um, I want to ask this question because I know I still struggle with this if I'm being completely transparent. Um, voting can be a very stressful time. Um, and I think it causes it can cause a lot of stress. It can cause a lot of anxiety. Even if you know which party you're personally going to go for, sometimes just the the the... I don't want to say overconsumption, but it can feel like overconsumption. It can feel like you can't really like get a space away from it. How do you navigate that, especially in your world? And like, what advice would you give to anybody who is kind of maybe feeling that anxiousness, that 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 kind of negativity, or that it's that anxiousness or stress they're feeling during this time? What kind of advice would you give from yourself and someone else? My advice to them is, you're not alone. In fact, the American Psychological Association just released a report today. A, a few, I got this a few minutes before we started our interview, Devin, mm -hmm. that stress in America is at a, a very high. Uh, of, um, so more than seven in 10 adults report that the future of our nation is a significant, a significant source of stress in their lives. Um, wow. the, the economy. 73% say that the economy is a significant source in their lives. And 69% said that the U.S. presidential election is a significant source of stress in their lives. We all feel this. Mm -hmm. We are all going through this. Um, it is an anxious time, right? Because we don't know what's going to happen, right? But what I've been doing is you have to let go. And mm -hmm. when I say let go, I mean, do everything in your part to inform and educate yourself about the election and the candidates you want. Make sure that you have a voting plan, not just plan to vote, but what is your voting plan? What in advance, make sure you know where you're supposed to vote, figure out what time you're going to vote, and then also bring two, three, four, five people with you to vote. Mm -hmm. I feel like when we focus on what we can control, that releases the anxiety on what we can't, right? You can control yourself and you can control your vote. You also have influence on those around you. So if others are feeling anxious, indifferent, or apathetic, have a conversation with them. Let them know what you're doing to cope with the stress and what your plan of action is on November 5th. That's what I'm doing. I already started thinking, if the worst case scenario happens, what am I going to do to protect my resources, to protect my income and streams of income, to protect my community, um, and, and to protect those that I love? And the answer to that is stepping up. The answer to that is planning for the worst. You know, we, we were just looking at Hurricane Milton in Florida, right? Mm -hmm. it, we were feeling anxious. We were feeling nervous. But you know what decreased that? Having a plan of action, hmm. knowing when you were going to leave, uh, making sure that your place was secure, border up your windows, you know, lock things down. That helps relieve anxiety. When you do nothing, you are going to feel the most anxious. But by doing something and even that something being planning for the worst, it will help. And any and I would say, look, if your candidate of choice is not elected, get even more involved in politics, local politics. Go to your local school board, make your voice be heard. Talk to local politicians and elected leaders. Let them know what the community needs. Let them know what's important. Let them know how to bring grocery prices down. How to you know get guns out of the, the hands of children who may be, you know, dealing with suicidal thoughts or, you know, th thoughts of violence and, and want to hurt another person, like have these conversations on a local level and, and take control of that. That's my response to that. Whew. You answered like that question, my next question and the last question in that one statement. And I love that. I love that. I think you, like you just, I almost don't even want to say anything after that because it is so, it, it is so much that needs to be, 
understood, taken away, and actioned upon. So I, I love that you can speak to that. I think actually kind of sets this up for my last question for you. I also want to make sure I respect your time. I know you're super busy during this time as well. I want to ask this question without, I want, I want to make sure I ask this question from a place of authenticity and being very genuine. And I don't want to ask it a very this question I'm from a place that's very like A plus B equals C. Um, I think there is a, there should be an understanding of why it is important to vote. And I'm definitely speaking that also from a perspective of somebody who's a person of color in the Black community, specifically understanding what our ancestors had to do in order for us to have this right, understanding the work that we today are still doing to make sure locally people have the right to vote, that access is better, easier, that there is no um, road bumps or roadblocks in the way of us being able to use that vote that we've worked so hard for, that we fought so hard for and continue to fight for. Knowing all those things, if there are still people who are out there who don't know if they want to vote, don't know if they care to vote, mm, I'm not interested in the election, I don't like you, like, are just out of it. What would you say if you had to try to, to, to push somebody to at least have the power to use that power or expression to vote, especially somebody of color, what would you say in why voting is so important? Even to somebody who tries to stay away from politics, whichever it is, how would you what would you say to somebody who to show them how important voting actually is? The first thing within our community. The first thing I would say, especially those in the Black community who may be distrustful of the political system itself, people in from certain communities may say that, hey, all these you know politicians and elected officials do is they either neglect us, abandon us, or they pander to us during the election cycle. And that's not right either. So I understand that. I hear that. I feel that. My response, though, is when you don't vote... And enough people who look like you and sound like you don't vote, you become discounted. And what happens is on a national level, a state level, and a political level, if they say, hey, 25-year-old Black and Latino or Black and Latinx folks don't vote, what they're going to do is they're not going to create any policies or laws that would help you, right? Because they know you're not going to vote anyway, right? If they say like, Black men between the ages of 40 and 45 in the Bible Belt don't vote. They're not going to enact any laws or policies or anything that would directly affect or help or benefit you or your community because, pe because Black people show up and vote, right? Because Black men are coming up to show, show and, and show up to the polls and vote. We're seeing even more effort and emphasis on this particular voting block politicians and elected leaders will respond. And if you don't like how they're responding, then hold them accountable. I don't know if you expect me to say something after that, but I'm not, because that is the perfect way to bring things to a close. There's nothing I can say on it, it would just be adding extra time. So thank <laughs> you so much for, for your honesty, for your research, for your knowledge, and most importantly, for your time to even speak to us today, because this is, like I said, this is, this is, is it's important. I, I, I'm trying to make sure I don't just like continue to say the thing over, same thing over and over, but it's, it's so important. These next couple of weeks leading up to election day are going to be crucial. So I'm so grateful and I'm so appreciative that you'd be able to speak to us, give that information and really help people who are voting or already on the way to the polls, who may need to gather others, or people who are maybe thinking of not voting and this may have just changed their minds to actually have a voice and to do something with, with the power that their ancestors and people have fought for over these years. So again, I just can't show and express my appreciation for you to be able to speak on our platform today. I, I'm so grateful and I appreciate you. Thank you, Devin. I appreciate the opportunity. Appreciate you. Appreciate Finish Line. And I also appreciate the work that you're doing to continue to amplify different voices in this space and let folks know how important it is for them to make their voice be heard at the ballot on November 4th. No, November 5th. Make sure you show up and vote November 5th. That's right. Exactly. I'm not going to touch on that anymore. Thank you again for everybody for tuning in to Community Voices. Remember, please go vote early, late, 
whichever it is, I, go vote. Make your voice heard. Thank you so much. Take care, y'all.